hey hey um insight number five here we're in section 101 for this one and we're gonna look at verse five i think no that's not right verse eight that makes more sense but when they put my drink bottle on that um so this section is really about enduring and how to have that peace in the midst of affliction because this is revelation given to joseph smith um when he's back in kirtland after they'd been up new york and back um so some months later but the saints in missouri are still having a huge persecution they were driven from their home in jackson county and they tried to establish in several counties surrounding that still driven out still persecuted despite the niceness of the people that persecution followed them the ugliness followed them it's not good um, they lost furniture clothing personal property and their crops have been destroyed it's also interesting to note in this chapter you'll see that they were told to just leave the properties that they owned rather than sell them to the enemy they're told to just leave them and i think that's so kind of um, interesting that it's better to let the enemy overrun it than you give in and assist them by selling it to them and giving them a legal right to it. Um, and that's why it's about enduring and persevering. And I'm still fighting a battle for my father's um, property and will in Thailand. I'm probably not going to win, but I'm not going to give it up. I'm like these saints. I'm not just going to sell it to them. I'm going to fight. And when fighting is done, I'm going to hand it over to the Lord and he will take care of it. But I still got to do what I got to do, right? And that's what he's telling these saints. What you need to do right now is to leave it, not sell it to them, not give in. I'm like, hmm. Because you think that leaving it is giving in. Leaving it's not giving in. Leaving it is making them have to take the action of then stealing it or illegally inhabiting it. So therefore they're in the wrong. You're not helping them out. And I really like that. I think that's pretty cool. Um, Anyway, we're looking at verse 8. This is about enduring. And this is awesome. I love, love, love this so, so, so much. Uh, in the day of their peace, they esteem lightly my counsel, but in the day of their trouble of necessity, they feel after me. Now he's talking about these saints that the persecution's following them. And this is one of the reasons it so happened to them so badly and he had to teach them this way, which is sad. And I'm like, don't ever be like this because you don't want to learn the lesson this way. Learn the lesson better before this sort of thing happens. Um, so in the day of their peace, so when it was peaceful and good, they didn't pray as much as they should, or they just sort of prayed with the like, oh yeah, you know, blah. But when they needed something, then they came to the Lord. Now we've all got that one family friend, one family member, or that one friend that only ever turns up when they need something, right? <laughs> I could name at least three. Um, um, so are you that friend of Jesus? The one that talks to him because you want something? Are you that? I hope not. Try not to be that. Try talking to him when you don't want something. Just talk to him anyway. Um, of course he wants you to ask. He, of course he does. But talk to him about other things as well. And talk to him every day. Several times a day. And it doesn't have to be in formal prayer. Just talk to him. Just tell him what's going on. While you're driving is a good time, especially if you're alone in the car or with your kids, just talk. Just imagine him sitting there with you and have a conversation. And you might not get the answers in the way you think, but encouraged to do that. I know it seems really weird at the beginning, but it really is kind of awesome. Um, so, give thanks, discuss your feelings, say hi, ask how he is, just like you would another friend. Our are our heavenly parents and Jesus Christ your friends or just a casual acquaintance you contact in times of strife? So are they someone you run to just because something bad happened or are you talking to them every day? Are you conversing with them about your day? Are you talking to them about everything? I mean, they know it anyway. But just have a conversation with them. If you hear a new song you like, share it and be like, I'm playing this right now, you've probably heard it, but what do you think of it? I really like it. Um, I mean, it's, it's, it's weird, but have them with you every day. Have Christ with you every day, especially. Have, I carry heavenly parents as well, because I need them. Um, but try with Jesus Christ first, if you're a little more comfortable. Or if you're a little more comfortable with Heavenly Father, go there first. Or Heavenly Mother, go there first. Or the Holy Ghost, go there first. Pick one, pick all of them, just try it. 
and just try talking to them in random times. Talk to them about the weather, how you appreciate it, and just be like, I'm so glad the sun's out right now. Yeah, you know all the hard stuff, but this is beautiful. The times that you see a flower you like, or, or a butterfly, or whatever. Just talk to them like you would a friend. Rather than just being that person, and we all have a person like that in our lives that only ever contacts us when they want something. Um, when something's going wrong for them. They're not really interested in what you're doing, how you're doing. They just want to get their need met. Um, so don't be that. And that's kind of what he's saying here. This is what he's saying to these saints were like that. They hadn't learned yet that they could go to Christ with everything, for everything, all the time. And they just went to him when they needed something. And that's not a good friend, is it? You don't want to be that friend. Okay. Um, so, the Easter message of the church in March 19, this is on churchofjesuschrist.org, was, No matter who you are or who you were, if you seek him, he is here. So I really want to encourage you to do this. And again, I know it can sound really weird and people are probably going to look at you weird, but so what? Who cares, man? You're talking to Christ and he cares about you, so just do it. Um, I was talking to this morning about something I bought online that doesn't fit and it made me upset because I really wanted it. I really wanted it to fit and I really wanted it to be good and it's not and it's going to take a lot of effort to return it for me, probably not for you, but for me it's a long drive to the store when it opens, probably next week. And I'm disappointed because I wanted this thing. However, he listened, made me feel better. And it's like I wasn't asking him to fix it because I know I can fix it. And I know he'll be there with me to help fix the problem. And it's, it's like inconsequential to the world, really. But I just wanted a friend to talk to about how disappointing it was to me, how much it hurt me, how frustrating it was for me. And then I asked him about how he was doing and what was frustrating him today and he probably isn't going to tell me as much but it's having those kind of conversations that you would have with a close friend right next to you try having that with Christ because no matter who you are or who you were if you seek him he is there true that all right thank you for joining me this week I hope something inspired you I really do and I will see you next week. I'm hoping it's going to be outside. And I'm hoping we're not going to be in lockdown so heavily. Right. <laughs> Love you guys. Be safe out there. Mwah.